Hi guys and welcome back to another Madden 19 rebuild. This one was supposed to be the Broncos. I had everything ready, everything recorded and edited and the footage unfortunately decided to corrupt. So we're going to skip that one, go to the Browns and I might go back to the Broncos at some point. It might even be the next one, not sure yet. But anyway, we're going to do the Browns today. Got a lot of potential, um, as I'm sure everyone knows. This team, very young. I mean, they've had first round picks, like the first pick in the first round for, for God knows how many years. This year, doesn't look like they'll get it, even though they aren't performing as well as people did hope uh, hope they would. But they do still have a very good team. I've already arranged the team, or rearranged the team a little bit. I've put Petonio and Zeitler as the tackles. Two guys who I quite commonly trade for, just because... They're cheap, um, they're easy tra to trade for, and they're very good overall. And for the three, four years we're going to do it, they should last their overalls. we got Baker Mayfield, star development, 82 overall. A lot of the time he wins MVP, and a lot of the time he gets up into the 90s. So hopefully he can do that for us. He's going to be a mainstay at quarterback for the team. We've got Jarvis Landry, um, got Golladay, sorry not Golladay, got Callaway there, who I thought... Would be higher overall, considering he's he's been okay this year. He's not been fantastic, but I thought he'd be higher than a 73 with um, with normal development. But defensively, we have a lot of very good guys. Um, we have Superstar, Denzel Ward. We'll definitely get into the 90s. I mean, this season he'll probably be into the 90s anyway. Mars Garrett already starts at 92, Superstar development. He'll be up to a 99 soon as well. Can expect a lot of sacks coming in from his side of the defensive line. The defensive line overall is okay. I really rate Ogba, I think he's really good. Um, Demarius Randall as a pickup for them is a very good player. And Julius Peppers, him I'm not sure on. We might keep him, we might not. He can play a lot of positions, like he's good at corner, linebacker and both safety positions. So he'd be a very good, versatile player to keep into the team. We might keep him round, we might not, as I said. You know, we'll see how things go, see if he develops. Hopefully he can, he is very young, so he'll sort of be here in hopefully his prime years come three, four years into this. But yeah, we're going to build this defence around Miles Garrett and Denzel Ward. We don't need much secondary, which is, you know, very promising because they are hard to trade for. Um, defensive line are easier to trade for and linebacker. Well, linebackers vary, but we could use some new linebackers. Might be getting them in um, when we do some trading. Larry Ogunjobi, I also think, is very good. And Anthony Zettel, he can sort of be a backup in any position, but I think I'm going to move him to defensive tackle and make him one of the two defensive tackle starters just because I'm trying to get a lot of sacks, and since he's more of a... He's not a run defender, he is a pass rusher guy. He hopefully will get some more sacks in there. But since I moved him over, actually, I might move him back to left end just so he keeps his scheme fit and can get more experience and then actually put him as a starter. A defensive tackle. I think that should work. I mean, I think he'll play the snaps and I think he'll get the uh, the more experience or the bonus experience. So hopefully he does and they develop quite nicely. We're at 78 overall. I can imagine we'll go up quite quickly with this team. Um, I can see us doing quite well. I can see us getting playoffs potentially this year, if not this year, next year. I mean, they should in real life be getting it in the next few years. But anyway, let's jump into some trades and see how we can improve this team. So the first trade here, we're going to get rid of Tyrod Taylor and we're going to get in Zadarius Smith just to bolster up our linebacker court a little bit more. I think he needs a contract, but I think this is definitely worth it. And the next trade, someone I try and get in a lot of rebuilds but never quite have enough capital to do so, you know, at a reasonable price. Laramie Tunsil for Christian Kirksey, Jamie Collins in a second round pick. I mean, both those linebackers aren't fantastic, not going to stay in the team for very long, so getting rid of them with a second round for Laramie Tunsil is definitely worthwhile. And the next one... We're going to get uh, Deshaun Hand off the lines for Devalve Carey and our outside linebacker. And I think I'm going to go in for another player. So the next player is Kenny Golladay. He'll be a great addition to the team. He'll, you know, suit up very well next to Jarvis Landry. We've got him for Zettel, Body Calhoun and Armstrong, all who aren't really going to play that much of a role. And the final, I think this will be the final trade anyway. We're going to get a first round off the Cardinals for Hubbard, who they're paying five mil a year and a fourth round. So... We'll see what the team looks like. I think I think we've improved the team. We've got a few better overall players. Um, I mean, we didn't have a lot of age anyway, so it's not like we've got a lot younger. But we have got people in positions where we didn't need them. We really needed another receiver. And we got Kenley Golladay in there. And that'll definitely, you know, that'll be a huge addition to the team. Um, Batonio, I'm going to move him to right tackle just because we have um, Laramie Tunsil at left tackle now. And then I'll move Zeitler back over to right guard. I think that will be the best way to use them. 
Even though both of them, I think, will play better as tackles, Zeitler and Batonio. But um, Larry Tunsil, he just suits the left tackle position so well. Him and Batonio shouldn't give up too many sacks. Um, I'm not sure how much we're actually um, going to rely on the line this time. I know we're on a power run scheme, so uh, I think having, having a higher rated line will definitely make a huge difference. And I think that's sort of why, when you do the simulation, that the Browns do quite well because their O-line, they do have some very good pieces in place and they run a power run scheme uh, with Nick Chubb and Duke, Duke Johnson in there. And we're actually going to start Nick Chubb. Um, and I think our other two linemen, sorry, our left guard, um, Corbett, is actually a rookie as well. So hopefully, you know, he can get a little bit of XP through that. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the team. We're up to an 87 overall offense and 83 defense. I still think defense is our strength. Um, I'm going to move to Sean Hand to... Defensive tackle, just because I think he plays better there. You know, he's, he's very big for a defensive end. He, he's, he's too big for a defensive end in a 4-3 anyway. Just, um, I think he's around about 300 pounds. But overall, you know, I think the team, we've definitely got potential. I can see us doing pretty well come mid-season and just about scraping playoffs. I mean, we're in a hard division with the Steelers. But, you know, I see how we go. Uh, hopefully, we can make playoffs. And hopefully, I think this might be our first Super Bowl if we end up winning it. So... Getting to the mid-season, we're actually 7-1. and one. Um, That is a lot better than I predicted we would be. We have a few XP points on a few players as well, so hopefully you know, we're just on the way up. We're going to keep getting better and better, but 7-1, and one, it is quite hard to improve from that. I mean, I did not expect us to get that, that good in the first year, considering 82 overall is decent, but it's, it probably is middle of the pack overall compared to a lot of other teams. Defensively, we do have quite a few players who have a few experience points. We have Denzel Ward here. We're going to try and get a scheme fit. I mean, he's very close anyway, and he actually does get up to a scheme fit with that overall boost. So hopefully, you know, that will just increase his experience even more, and he'll get up into the mid-90s even faster than he already was. But yeah, defensively, we're doing pretty well. Resignings, we don't have too many. We have uh, we have Zedaria Smith like I thought we would. He, he doesn't want too much money, so, um, you know, two and a bit a year, we'll definitely give that to him. 20 mil over five years isn't too bad, considering... <laughs> He probably will be a starter for us. I mean, he might be, he might not be, but we don't have many trade pieces left, so we might just be looking to build the team as it is now or through the draft. Uh, getting linebackers in the draft can be really hit or miss. So getting in someone who's not great, but he is a good player, is, is definitely something you know that the, the, that the team needs. But I'm going to lowball the other guys just because they're decent players, but they're not fantastic. So, And, and they're not starters, whereas Adaria Smith is. So... We'll give these guys low ball offers. If they don't take them, you know, I'm more than happy for them to leave. If they do take them, you know, it's a win-win really, I suppose. But what we're going to do is we will jump towards the end of the season. 7-1, and one, I can't imagine we're going to miss playoffs, but with the way the sim goes, you never know. So let's see. So coming to the end of the season, we did make the playoffs and we have a bye week. So that I'm get well, I'm not guessing, I'm... We won the division. We lost to the Ravens in the final week, though. So, 12-4, and four, that is a very good record. I mean, the Steelers tend to do better than that. The Bengals are also a sneaky good team in um, in simulation. So, I'm quite happy because this is a hard division in simulation to get ahead of that. But Baker Mayfield leading the NFL in passing yards with around 4,800. Fantastic season from him. 71% completion percentage as well is great. Nick Chubb coming in big there with... Not very good um, yards per carry. That's pretty bad. But a lot of touchdowns for him and Duke Johnson. 20 between them. A fantastic year from Jarvis Landry there. 1,400 yards. It's got to be a Pro Bowl. And also a good year from Kenny Golladay. But something I always sort of, when I'm looking around players for the league, Jarvis Landry, I always think is older than he is. So him having a good season, getting some XP, and he's still got a lot of room to grow. So that's definitely fantastic to see him get into a pro bowl he should have one or two experience points so he should get up into the 90s offensive line fantastic and Jabril peppers having a fantastic season there seems like we've got a lot of tackles for loss over the team a fair few not as many as i did hope actually but um deshaun hand coming up with 12 and 14 from miles garrett also getting five sacks to sean hand a lot of sacks throughout the team actually 13 from garrett nine from ogba eight from zadaria smith that is pretty good but deshaun hand five sacks could Maybe be um, Defensive Rookie of the Year. It's a good season. He had a lot of tackles. A lot of tackles for loss. So we'll have to wait and see. Usually between him and Denzel Ward. Or Denzel Ward tends to get it himself. But he didn't have a fantastic season for us. Um, stats wise. But hopefully. 
you know, he might pick something up if he does, but that superstar development, he's going to be into the high 90s, and the playoffs should be a breeze for us, hopefully. So, offensively, we came in fifth. You would expect that, considering we had the most yards, and I'm very surprised he didn't win MVP, actually, Baker, Baker Mayfield there. I mean, Todd Gurley always gets high up in the MVP race, because the Rams always do fantastically. I mean, 14-2, if we run into them, it's going to be very hard to beat them. Them and the Jags, and the Chiefs, actually, are the three... Three teams that tend to perform really, and the Chargers actually, perform really well. So we've definitely got the harder side of things. Because we could come up against the Chiefs. I mean, we're going to come up against the Steelers. We've got a lot of hard teams on, on our side of it. Unfortunately, we don't win um, Defensive Rookie of the Year there. Denzel Ward does come in third. Minkovic Patrick already up in the 90s. Um, Derwin James already up in the 90s. There's a lot of good good rookies this year so um unfortunately they've made trading for them very difficult so it's not something i think we're ever going to be able to do getting um getting some of the high power rookies i mean deshaun hand is a rookie but he's not one of these high power rookies like uh, like the derwin james types but anyway team a fair few awards throughout the team miles garrett coming in with d lineman of the year very happy with how the team's doing very happy we made the playoffs um we'll sim through to next week and sort of, we'll see who we're coming up against and where we are. So, our first playoff game is against the Chiefs. And this is going to be a very difficult one. They actually were um, higher than us in overall. I think they were about an 86. So, I'll be happy if, if, if we get through this one, I'll be very surprised. But we're up 10 to nothing. I mean, it could happen. It's coming towards the end of the second second quarter. I think we have the ball and I think we're moving it quite nicely. We've got a red zone alert there and we're up 17 to nothing. Their offense can do nothing against us. And as I say that, they score. So 17 to 7. It looks like we're going to put the game game to bed. 20 to 7. It's coming in the fourth quarter. We've got the ball. We actually make the field goal, which is surprising because we don't tend to actually make that many. 23 to 7. Only five minutes left. 30 to 7 is game over. 30 to 15 is probably going to be the final score. I will definitely take that. 33 to 15 actually it ends. So I'm surprised we won that one. I really really didn't expect us to win that one just because of how overpowered the chiefs are in simulation but i mean absolutely buzzing with that looks like we could potentially be making our way to the super bowl only a few more games to win before we get there so let's jump into the into our next playoff game and see who we're against so this game we're against the Jaguars, and Blake Bortles, the MVP caliber quarterback in simulation, is absolutely ripping us to shreds early on. 21 to nothing. There's nothing we can do against him. I'm not sure if it's his fantastic play in simulation, or whether it is Leonard Fournette just carrying them. But either way, we are down 28 to 3 in the third quarter, and we're taking field goals, so this is pretty much game over. I mean, I would jump in if I thought there was a realistic chance of us winning, but I mean, we're down, we're down 22 points. This will be the only sort of thing I try. If I'm, if you know, if we get this um, this fourth conversion, it might give us a sliver of hope with eight minutes left. I think we'll be down two or three possessions. So, I mean, there is a chance, but I, I don't think we're going to win. I'll just try and get something. If we don't get it, you know, we don't get it. But either way, they weren't going to go for it, and they were going to kick a field goal. So, I can see triangles open. We're going to go for him, and he he just doesn't make it. So, unfortunately, that probably is going to be game over. It's not a bad effort from a from a team that, well, were one and what, thirty one before the season started. So, getting to the playoffs, just I mean, just getting to this point, playing the Jags. I mean, we did get absolutely blown out by the Jags, thirty eight, thirty eight to twenty. Doesn't look as uh, as bad as thirty eight to thirteen did. But anyway, still a bad game. Not sure how they won by that much. Looking at those stats, Baker Mayfield had an okay day. Leonard Fournette literally just carried them on his back to victory. That's quite annoying. Um, two interceptions for them as well. Unfortunately, Baker threw them and four sacks. So if we're getting sacked four times, that many picks, we're never going to win the game. But let's jump into free agency. So there aren't many free agents that we actually want to sign. We're going to get Jake Elliott and Trevor Williams. I mean, there's the usual candidates, uh, the same as pretty much any other rebuild. So we don't want these guys. We're just going to jump into the draft and find some gems there. So jumping into the draft, there are quite a few um, decent prospects in this one. There's a few guys who I've put on the draft board. Um, Edwin Roos looks pretty good. We're not massively in need of a lineman, but um, but he does look very good. 
Derek Clark also does look pretty decent. Very good combine. If we can pick him up with our second first round pick, we'll definitely get him. But I think the guy we're going to go with first is Ellis Ambrose. Great spec catch. He's six foot four. Him, Kenny Golladay, and Jarvis Landry in the stock be a very nice combination. And he has quick development at an 80 overall. He's pretty quick. Not fantastic route running, but him and Golladay on the outside with Jarvis Landry in the slot when we run three receiver sets should be pretty, you know, it'll be probably one of the best receiver tandems in the league. Probably uh, up there with the Rams. Uh, Three-man tandem on that one. And unfortunately, our other guys are off the draft board. Um, in this case, I'm not going to not gonna go for Alan Black quite yet just because that will be a massive reach. The only guys that are sort of first-round talents that are left are these two running backs and this defensive tackle, DeAndre Stevens. Um, I'm not sure who I'm going to go with out of this. We could go with uh, Antoine Spain there. I don't think anyone here looks uh, looks that great, though. Besides, I mean, the running backs both look amazing, but we do already have two good running backs, so this is quite a difficult one. I mean, an A- minus in stiff arm and carrying and a B plus in trucking. He does look really good he's not that fast but Barrington does look very good um, it's between those two and I'm gonna go for Barrington I think uh, I don't know actually not that it's gonna matter too much this could could give us the option to trade away one of our other running backs could go DeAndre Stevenson he's I mean he's good at everything but bench press and that is so important for a defensive tackle um, no I'm gonna go Barrington and then maybe trade away one of our other running backs. And he is 80 overall with star development. So he is a very good player. Not a massive need for the team. I mean, he's the 30th overall pick. But we'll go to the end of the draft and see who else we get. So our draft was fairly decent. And um, we got a fullback in the third round. I thought he was going to be higher than a 71. But he does have star development. So hopefully in, in, in a few years to come. Or even towards the end of this year. He'll be up to all the mid 70s. But... Saying that, as I've said before, I'm not sure how important a fullback actually is. Um, but yeah, the overall draft, there were a fair few good players. Reggie Morris here, fantastic. 83 overall coming out of the draft. A few 81s. Um, James Jowers, I thought was going to be a superstar. We don't need a quarterback, obviously. But he looked like he was going to be a very good player. He should do well for the Browns. Um, Ambrose is up there with some of the best players. Edwin Roos, he looks okay uh, as a power. He'd be a good guard um, to, to fit into the team. We do need a left guard, but I think there's better ones we can trade for than him. And we used our pick to get Ambrose, which is definitely worth it. So into the second year, the team is still looking very good. We're up to an 88 overall. Um, running back situation, we have three very good ones. I might look to trade one away. If not, I've got a third down running back in Duke Johnson. I've got a power back who's a little bit better than Barrington at, in Nick Chubb. And then sort of Barrington will just be the, the back that we use most of the other time. So it's not the worst. I mean, it's a very first world problem to have too many good running backs. So I'm not going to complain there. Overall, wide receiver wise, we're looking uh, we're looking good with our with our first round draft pick in there as well. I think I'm going to move Jarvis Landry, as I said, to the slot. Kenny Golladay. Um, so if it's a two receiver set, it'll be those two. If it's three, Jarvis Landry will be in the slot. But overall, our offense looks very good. Um, David and Joku is actually uh, going up quite nicely. You know, steady steady growth over in the tight end spot. On defence, we are still looking good. EJ Gaines is going to be our number three receiver, I think. I'm probably going to look to trade away, trade away um, a cornerback. Sorry, I meant he's going to be our number three cornerback. But I'm going to look to trade away a cornerback, I think. And maybe one of our linebackers. I'm not sure. I definitely need to do a few changes to the team. I mean, we're so close and we just need that final push. So, Quinton Nelson. I know I trade for him a lot, but it's just because he's so easy to trade for. And he's got superstar development. So he's, he's an easy 90 overall guard. And it's the one position on the line we need. We're not going to have to change him around. We'll slide him in at left guard. And we'll have undoubtedly the best offensive line in the entire league. And since we um, we got in Quentin Nelson. Uh, Corbett is going to be traded away with a fifth round. For the first round pick from the Falcons. Um, so in theory we got Quentin Nelson in the first round for Corbett. Uh, Trevor Williams and a fourth so definitely definitely worthwhile and it also makes the offense so much more powerful as a unit so we've got pretty much around 85 to 90 overalls on every single position on the offensive line should make running the ball fairly easy should make hopefully our offense be one of the best in the league um, defensively we're also very good as you can see our overall is 89 overall um, and in the 90s on offense and defense 
just going to sort out the specialists here and then sort of jump towards the mid-season. I mean, it's going to be hard to get better than 7 1. Maybe we can go 8 0. Let's see. Let's jump to the mid-season and sort of see where we are overall wise. So, jump into the mid-season. Once again, we're 7 and 1. Um, we did just lose to the Rams, so he did have a 7 game win streak going for us, which. Once again, fantastic. Looks like we could make playoffs again, so that'd be two for two. Um, considering the re rebuild, re rebuild record we have so far, that's fantastic, because our rebuild progress has been pretty bad. Um, but anyway, we're going to re-sign Laramie Tunsil. It's an 89 overall. I mean, if he's someone I can get in on more rebuilds, I will try to. Just trading for him can be very difficult, because teams are very stingy when it comes to trades. I don't know if they've done an update or something, but they are getting very stingy when it comes to trades. Um, Demarius Randall. I mean, he's just going to be sort of a figurehead of our defence. He's just very, you know, good overall, good strong overall. We're never going to need another free safety. Having him there is fantastic. Emmanuel Ogba, someone else who I'm going to be playing quite a lot, so we'll keep him. And JC Trey is also someone I'm going to keep. So they're probably going to be the only guys that I'm going to re-sign as of now. Everyone else isn't worth walking. I mean, we'll shine Joe Sober when we can, but otherwise we'll just jump to the end of the season and see how the team has done. So at the end of the season, once again we're playoffs. We did go 11-5, and five, so 4-4 four and four in the second half of the season. Not fantastic. We did have a bit of a harder schedule, and we didn't end up winning the division, 11-5. and 12-4 Bengals ended up winning it. So this is a very competitive division. Um, us, the, compared to the Steelers and the Bengals, it's always going to be tough. And the Ravens, every now and again, do sort of sneak in there with some good results. But... Played against the teams we played against, as you can see, seven game win streak to start with. Quite a few convincing wins in there, and then we did lose three. I don't know how we lost to the Cardinals, actually. Three to 38. Can't believe we only scored three against them, and then we got blown out by the Bengals. So, and, and a one possession loss to the Steelers. So, either of that winning either of those games probably would have given us the division. But anyway, I guess playing the extra game does give us a bit more experience, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, Team overall is looking very good. Baker Mayfield didn't have as good a year this year, unfortunately. Um, it's still a decent year. 67% completion percentage, 31 touchdowns to 11 picks, over 4,000 yards. I mean, it could be worse, but considering he did go up in overall and the team did get better, I would expect him to perform a little bit better. Our three-man running back tandem did okay. Uh, Barrington didn't actually start, which is quite annoying even because I remember... I did put him in in the starting position, but receiving wise, looking pretty nice. Over 800 yards for three guys, and Ambrose came in there with three only three touchdowns, but he still had a pretty nice year there. Jarvis Landry once again being the outstanding performer. O line doing amazingly well. Um, only three sacks given up from Petonio, zero from Zeitler. That side of the line, you're not getting through it. I mean, you're not getting side e through either side of the line very easily. So we're giving up hardly any sacks. A lot of tackles from Joe Schobert there. Um, and you, uh, Jabril Peppers, actually. So we're doing pretty well overall. Um, tackles for loss. Double digits for four players, which is very good. And Miles Garrett also there with 16 and a half sacks. I mean, that is fantastic. But the thing about this game is sort of when you get the Khalil Max and the Jadavian Clownies in, you end up getting sort of in the, in the 20s, sometimes the 30s for sacks. So 16 and a half doesn't seem like much, but it is a very good year. A lot of picks um, throughout the team. Also another great stat there. Not many forced fumbles. Only the one from Miles Garrett and defensive touchdowns. I'm guessing we had none. We didn't. So the team overall is fairly decent. Um, we're going to jump into our first playoff game against the Patriots. See how we do. Hopefully we win. Offensively we're 15th in the league and defensively. So we're, we're literally bang average. So I can't imagine we're going to do that well in the in the playoffs. Maybe next year will be our year, but I mean, you never know. So um, actually, before we jump into the game, we'll look at the awards. None for us, unfortunately, this year. Um, I can't imagine we're going to get anything that high because, yeah, we didn't have sort of any quarterbacks or anything or any running backs or skill positions do that well. Uh, Showbear actually came second Defensive Player of the Year and Miles Garrett fifth, so they shut me up. But anyway, I think they're the only awards we're going to see. Um, we'll jump into the playoff game and see, you know, how the team is doing. So jumping into the game against the Patriots, we were a way better overall than them. I think we're up to a 92 now, and they were only an 82 um, somehow. I mean, Tom Brady has retired, which lowers their overall massively, I'm, I'm assuming. 
but they do take an early lead at seven to nothing. But we do bounce straight back, fourteen to seven. Don't know how we got that second touchdown and potentially that third. Huge turnovers, I'm guessing, and it looks like we're controlling the game pretty well. We're up 20, 28 to seven. I can't imagine us losing this game. I mean, you never know against the Patriots, but I mean, 35 to seven, it's going to be hard for them to come back, especially if they're taking field goals. So 35 to 10. Coming towards the end of the game, looks like we're going to make it past the wildcard round and go on to the next stage of the playoffs. And we do. 42 to 12. I mean, 12 is a very weird score. They must have got a safety or something towards the end. But looks like the team is performing pretty well. I mean, four touchdowns for Baker Mayfield. He was destroying like Mullen there. Um, so we'll jump into the next playoff game. Hopefully, we can win that one as well. So it's a division rivalry here, us against the Bengals. I mean, the Bengals did go 12-4 and four in the regular season, so they're probably going to be quite hard to beat, but they were only an 84 overall, so we should beat them. And going into the second quarter, it is scoreless. We're down 3 to nothing. as soon as I say that. Classic commentator's curse, but we're coming back. Hopefully we can get something. It looks like... I don't know exactly what's going on here, but it looks like we're going to go for a field goal and make it three apiece going into the half. So... Not the most exciting, <clears throat> okay, somehow we actually managed to score, so, but it, so it was a relatively exciting first half, I guess, but 10-3, to 3. it looks like we're somehow just keeping them out of the end zone, maybe they're missing a lot of kicks or something, 17-3, to 3. we're up two possessions, there's only five minutes left, and they turn the ball over, so that probably is game over, 20-3, to 3. our defence absolutely stepped up this game, it showed them who's boss, and I mean, we didn't lap a touchdown, which is, you know, phenomenal going into the AFC Championship game. Not letting up a touchdown. The defence is on fire. Hopefully we win that game, make it to the Super Bowl, and we end up winning it. Because I'd love to actually win a Super Bowl with the Browns, because I know they're probably one of the teams that have the better chances of doing it, considering the potential on the, on, on the lineup. But anyway, let's jump into the next playoff game, and hopefully we win. So, we're against the Jaguars. It's a revenge match for last year. Hopefully, you know, we can do something. And it doesn't look like we can. Down 10 to nothing in the second quarter. Not holding out much hope for the team. I mean, it doesn't look like we can do anything. We're going to just let them play it out. Hopefully we don't miss the field goal. We don't, so it's 10-3. to 3. I mean, I'm only going to jump in probably when it gets to the fourth quarter if it looks like there's a slim chance of us winning and we're missing field goals or something ridiculous like that. So three seconds left. Oh, we're going to make the field goal, luckily. So 10-6. to 6. It's not the highest scoring game. 13-6. to 6. They're going to keep us out again. We just cannot score a touchdown against this Jacksonville defence. They are very good, but they're not... I don't think they're good enough to keep us out of the end zone the entire game. It looks like they are, unfortunately, fourth and six on the 12-yard line. I'm going to jump in quick, not take the field goal, because we do need a touchdown. So I'm just going to pick any random play here. Hopefully we can pick up those six yards with it. I mean, the Jacksonville defence is very good. I think over the middle, if we um, if we drag both guys, one of them's going to be open. Um, either Golladay or Njoku. Looks like Njoku's going to be open there. He had a step on his man. Can he get in? He can get down to the one. So hopefully they can punch it in from there. And that'll put us within a field goal this game. And that's all we need. We just need to sort of be within, within a chance of getting it. We get to the red zone. Game winning drive. Are we gonna they got a turnover by the looks of it? Feel it ends in a field goal. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're gonna have to take it, make it 16 apiece. Looks like oh, looks like they're gonna get a field goal. Third down stop. No idea what happened there. Um an interception maybe, and we don't go for the field goal. This game is crazy towards the end. No idea what's going on. They are gonna make it a field goal. I'm gonna take the field goal just because they miss so often. Um He's 47 yarder. He is very windy, so you can understand why he might miss. But I mean, he's already missed one or two this game, so I'm just going to put this one in. Hopefully, we can get a stop. I'm not going to jump in on defense just because I think that will make it a bit unfair. Because if we were jumping in every game, we probably wouldn't end up winning the Super Bowl every single year we made the playoffs. We're going to let the computer sim this one out. Hopefully, we can get a stop. I mean, the Jacksonville offense isn't going that fantastically. They're going for it on fourth and 20. And they're not going to make it. So we actually do get through to the Super Bowl. Not sure who we're going to play. Probably the Rams, um, just because of how overpowered they are. Let's find out. And it is the Rams. So this is going to be an intense game. They're already up 7 nothing. Hopefully we can punch it in here. 7 apiece. I'm not sure exactly what is going on. We somehow got the ball back. They didn't punt it or anything. I'm guessing a sack or an interception or a fumble or something. And we get it in. We're up 7 points. And we have the ball back. And we're in the red zone. So we're up 21 to 14. 
it's still a close game. I'm just hoping we can manage to get a Super Bowl. It looks like we deserve one this game. 28 to 14. 28 to 17 is still a two possession game. 31 17 is so close. Six minutes left. I'm just praying we can keep keep it on. I'm gonna. I, sh I knew I should have taken the field goal myself because they miss so many. Um, if you look through the regular season stats, they don't miss too many. But it seems in the playoffs, the kickers turn to the worst kickers imaginable. But it's 34 to 17. We got double the score on them, and that is the Super Bowl for the Browns. We win by 20 points, 37 to 17. I mean, we'll do another year just because I think we can maybe make it to the Super Bowl again. We've been very close in the first year. We win it in the second year, but the Browns are the Super Bowl champions. Going into the final year, this will probably be our final draft class. Um, we might do another year. If we win a Super Bowl. We could go for three Super Bowls, but this is the draft class. Um, I, I pretty much simmed most of it because I think it probably will be the final year. We might make it to a Super Bowl, and if we do win two, I'm not sure whether we will do another one. Just getting two in two years and getting to the playoffs in the first year, I'd consider that somewhat dynasty status. If we got three, it definitely would be. But overall, this was a decent draft. Uh, in the second round, there was actually an 83 overall running back. I mean, if we needed a running back, definitely worthwhile getting him in. But the Giants went for him, even though they have Saquon Barkley. So I think something that EA do need to fix is what teams draft what players. Because there are some strange ones that get picked up there are players in positions that the team already has multiple players in but there's a lot of gems in this draft by the look of it scrolling down a lot of uh, high overalls in the later rounds quite surprising as you can see in the fourth round we got some 77 overalls here so decent draft um overall talent wise we unfortunately didn't have that good a draft but this is what the team will look like for the final year. I'll make one or two trades. I mean, I'm going to go all in to win a Super Bowl. So probably another middle linebacker. Maybe another defensive end because uh, Ogba didn't have that good a season last year. I think he only got five or, f or four sacks or something. And his overall is a lot lower than everyone else's on, on the defense. But that's probably the only positions we need to get. So let's see who we can get with the trade pieces we have. Hopefully make it to another Super Bowl. So... Trey Flowers, very easy to trade for for some bizarre reason. Fields and Barrow are going to go out. We'll get him in, move him to left end, and have the best line. And Bobby Wagner, pretty fairly easy trade again this one. Second round, Ogbrew and Smith for B-Wags. And this is what the team looks like overall. Up to a 93 with a 97 offense and a 95 defense. I mean, we have a lot of fant I mean, we have pretty much... One of the best, if not the best, player in each position in the league on our defence. So our defence, if we don't get first in the league defensively, I'm going to be so surprised. I mean, talent-wise, we've got one of the best starting corners. We've got the best ends in the league as a duo. Defense, defensive tackles, both fantastic. Great linebackers, fantastic safeties. I mean, the offence as well. We're just missing that elite running back. Otherwise, we would have, once again elite players in every single position so this is probably the i mean the last uh, rebuilds we've done have been good but i mean this one head and shoulders better than the other ones so i'll see him to the mid-season or the end of, of the season not sure yet see how the team's doing see if we make the playoffs hopefully we can get another super bowl so mid-season we're five and two we're doing okay we're probably gonna have a lot of re-signings this year Considering we haven't had too many in the previous years, I'm guessing this is the year the contracts are going to be up for a few few of the high, uh, high overall rookies and a few of the other players. So Miles Garrett does want a lot of money, but he is definitely worth it. He's been our sack leader the past two years with double digit sacks both years. This year, I'd be surprised if he doesn't get it again. We're going to get him back. We're going to get Jabril Peppers back. We're going to get sort of everyone here we can get back we are going to get back um Jabril Peppers has gone up to a 94 with quick development he did he's gone between star and quick um i'm not sure how he's performed so well the algorithm i mean well i know how the algorithm they use for development trait increases is is a bit backwards um but yeah anyway kenny gollard out to a 91 overall as well he looks ridiculous his face scan also looks so good in this game. I absolutely love Kenny Golladay. I mean, hoping. I mean, I'm recording this Thanksgiving, and I'm probably going to release it Thanksgiving night. So hopefully, he has had a good game against the Bears. But yeah, I'm going to bring back everyone. Larry Ogunjobi, probably, probably the final sign of yeah. I'm going to bring back everyone. We'll jump to the end of the season and see how the team has done. I'm hoping we made playoffs, and we did. So 
we won the division again, 12-4. and four. This team is fantastic. I mean, I know we didn't win the division last year, but we went 11-5, and five, and we only got beaten out by a ridiculous performance from uh, from the Bengals, going 12-4. and four. But Baker Mayfield, I think, is solidifying himself as one of, if not the best quarterback in the league um, at the moment. Rushing, not fantastic, but as I said, we have a good committee of running backs, just not one standout fantastic one, so... Maybe I should have looked to trade for someone like Todd Gurley or someone like Melvin Gordon or something might have been a nice addition to this team. But receivers, Kenny Golladay and Jarvis Landry, both fantastic. David Njoku, fantastic. And Ambrose, just done pretty decently considering he's the number three in a in a system where he's got two number one receivers to get catches against. The line performed phenomenally. I mean... This team overall has been absolutely ridiculous. But anyway, let's end the stats here. Let's jump into the playoff game. Hopefully, we can get another Super Bowl with this ridiculously good Browns team. So coming up against the Chiefs, they were a 91 overall. I think we're up to about a 90, 95 or 96 now. So we should get the win, and we're up 7-3. to three. Looking to punch another touchdown in. Can we get it? We can. 14-3. to three. So it's a decent start. <laughs> Looks like we should get another one. So 21-10. to 10. 21-17, it is a close game actually, and it looks like they're going to score again, so it's 24-21. to Not a very convincing game on either way, we're down 10 points, coming into the fourth. Th I mean, I don't know where the hell they got all those points from, 38-21. to It looks like we're not going to win this game. I'm not going to play the moment, I'm just going to let it sim out. If they win, they win. It looks like we could get another touchdown, we're down 10. We still have, oh, I mean, them getting that touchdown is game over. So, unfortunately, we make it to the playoffs again, but we don't win the Super Bowl again. But I'm pretty happy with how this team performs. Getting to the playoffs three years out of three. Double-digit wins in every single season. I mean, definitely the best team we've done so far overall. Probably one of the best we're going to get besides, you know, the Elite, the Chiefs, the Jags, the Rams, those sort of elite sim teams but besides that i'm very happy with the team hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video if you've made it this far let me know down in the comments because i want to know if these videos are either too long or if you'd watch more um for example but if they're too long let me know down or actually not if they're too long let me know down in the comments if you've made it this far that way i'll know if they are too long i can shorten it until enough people are letting me know but anyway subscribe to the channel like the video and i'll see you guys soon for another rebuild